All right, so real quick, we're just gonna go through the rest of this um, activity so we can get it finished. Um, so we're not gonna do this as a demo, but I'll just walk through it. Uh, this would be boiling of ethanol, which is a type of alcohol, okay? And if we could actually boil it in class, but I didn't set it up, it would be a boiling point at around 80 degrees Celsius, okay? And remember, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, all right? Um, oh, it's right here, 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so then what do you think the boiling point of a 50-50 mixture would be, right? If I mix half ethanol and half water, a lot of people would guess that it's going to be some kind of combo of the two, maybe boiling at around 90 degrees Celsius. But what actually happens is if we start to boil, this is a temperature versus time, okay, kind of like we did in Icy Hot. Uh, what actually happens is if I have the mixture, right, that has water, right, and let's say ethanol, different, those will be open circles, okay, versus closed circles. All right, what actually happens if you boil the mixture is that the ethanol boils off first, right? So once it starts to hit 80 degrees Celsius, the ethanol particles will start to come out as a gas and just leave the water particles, okay? And then once all the ethanol particles uh, boil off, then uh, you can keep heating it and then eventually the water particles will then boil off when it hits 100, okay? So this is a way that you can separate a mixture of things with different boiling points, uh, which is called distillation. You don't really need to know that, but just interesting. Okay, is a way to separate uh, liquids that have different boiling points because the one with a lower boiling point will boil off first and then leave uh, the other thing. Okay, so that's one other way that you can separate the mixtures. Okay, so on the next page is part six, which is iron and sulfur. Um, so if you remember, um, in the lab, we mixed the yellow iron powder, I mean, sorry, the yellow sulfur powder and the iron filings, okay? And then we were able to separate those back out with a magnet, okay? Kind of like this little video. It's kind of boring, whatever, they mix it, okay? And then we didn't mix ours quite that well. can be separated by physical methods. For example, when a magnet is brought to the mixture, it removes essentially all the iron filings, leaving the sulfur behind. Okay, so that's what we did in the lab, basically where you could separate them out using their different properties since iron is magnetic and sulfur is not. Okay, um, but then we want to think about what happens if we heat it. Okay, and we can't do this in the lab because it makes a really toxic gas. So, you know, that's not really going to work. Um, so basically, I'll just show you when they heat it. There's weird, like guitar music. I don't know why. It's pretty cool. Okay, here we go. So if we had lit that mixture, this is what would happen. This is just a hot glass rod. Super toxic. That's why we couldn't do it. All right, so those two things actually will burn together. All right, and then let's see what happens to it. And it gets incredibly hot, like burning the surface. Okay, so that's what happens to it. And then let me show you in this video, because it's a little bit better. Once they uh, burn it, this one they burned in a test tube. Okay, and you can kind of see the same thing, like what's happening. It's not quite as exciting in this one. Okay, but they're basically burning it together. So the important part of this, okay, is now they're going to take it out of the test tube. Iron sulfide. Let's mute her. We don't like her. Okay. So basically, do you see what's happening now? This is no longer magnetic. Okay. So the important part of this is the iron and the sulfur, when we just mix them together, right, uh, we're able to pull the iron out because it's magnetic. But what happens after you burn them, okay, instead of being a mixture of iron and sulfur, they turn into what's called a compound, iron sulfide. Okay, so they've somehow combined together differently than just mixing them, which gives them new properties. Okay, so the iron and sulfur, when they mix together through heating, they now have created something different that no longer has the same properties. Look, now it's silver, now it's sort of brittle, it's more like a tight pack solid, and importantly, it's no longer magnetic. Okay, so that is a different kind of mixing, right, than what we saw um, 
when we just mixed it together, okay? So what you're gonna uh, write here, observe what happens when iron and sulfur are heated together to produce a new substance, okay? Right, that new substance is called iron sulfide, all right? I was gonna have it in here, okay, there we go. Uh, iron sulfide, and we'll learn how to name these pretty soon, okay? But instead of being a mixture of iron and sulfur, it's now become what's called a compound, which is iron sulfide. These two things have burned and combined in such a way that they now have new properties, okay? This one you could split with a magnet, separate with a magnet, okay? But this uh, one is no longer magnetic, okay? So that's our introduction into what's gonna happen when we start to combine things in a different kind of way. Okay, which we're gonna get into a lot more. This is just sort of an intro, <clears throat> okay? All right, then you're gonna answer all the rest of these questions. Um, whatever, done, you can do all this, you can do all this, okay. Uh, in number three, I want you to try to draw a particle diagram, which we kind of did together, of the iron and sulfur mixture. And then I want you to try to draw what you think happens when it produces a compound, okay? And how does that look different, the mixture from the compound? Okay, so draw the particle diagrams. You can try that now if you want to pause it. Okay, and then uh, let me copy this to a new screen. Okay, all right, and then the last thing is a couple of definitions. Um, so as far as mixtures go, there are two kinds of mixtures. One is called homogeneous and one is called heterogeneous, okay? And the homogeneous mixture, all right, uh, means that a, a mixture in which, um, let's see, a mixture, ah, I can't write, okay, that has the same proportions, okay, in any sample, okay, the same proportions of its components in any sample. Okay, so that was like some of the ones that we drew, right, that maybe kind of looked like this. And you can go back and think about, you're going to give some examples uh, to what these were. Okay, so something that's sort of evenly distributed, we call it a homogeneous mixture. Okay, um, as opposed to a heterogeneous mixture, which is a mixture uh, where the proportions vary. Okay, where the proportions of the components vary uh, in different samples. Okay, that's where it's not really mixed together quite so cleanly, right? Like for example, we had, well, I'll let you remember what they were, right? So if we have something like this, and then there's like something like this. Okay, this would be a heterogeneous mixture because it's not evenly distributed. It doesn't have the same proportions in each uh, part. Okay, and then a compound we're going to define a little more in the next activity, but for now let's just say it is composed. I'm just going to call them substances for now because I don't want to give you the other word yet. Okay, composed of two or more substances. Okay. Uh, let's just say for now that combine chemically, okay, as opposed to these other things just kind of combine physically and we can separate them back. Uh, if it combines chemically, sometimes we can't separate them back, okay, and the new substance has different properties than the components, Okay, just like that iron sulfide. Now it's no longer magnetic. Now it's silver. Now it's kind of brittle. It's a totally kind of different thing than it was before. There's some different properties than its components. Okay, we're going to talk about this a lot more because this is where we're going in this unit. Okay, but for now, that'll be good enough. Okay, all right. And then just make sure you finish all of this activity. Um, and I'm going to check this next class and then we're going to move on. All right, that is all.